I can s maybe start by saying that it's not the first time at Lundskonsthal that we make exhibitions that focus on a particular country or region. And, and in the curatorial context, let's say, colleagues, uh, sometimes this is seen as a sort of old-fashioned way of working, that you should not be doing these regional or national shows anymore because they're not important and that's not a good way of grouping people. I never really agreed with this because I also think that audiences enjoy the opportunity uh, not just to see good work but also to think about regions that they don't think about so often. You know? uh, to, to have an opportunity to think about what, what is special about Iceland or Georgia, just to take two examples of countries we've worked with in recent years, exhibitions that I have been involved in, um, or Lebanon for instance. There's another uh, exhibition that was made here. Um, it's a good opportunity to think about something and to listen to intelligent conversation about it in the work that people enjoy, particularly in a university city where knowledge is very much valued uh, and information. So as a strategy for a Konstale in a university city, making regional exhibitions is not so bad. Uh, then, of course, in the case of Central Asia and Georgia, for that matter, there is also the, the, the more, let's say, uh, geopolitical aspect of, of the collapse of the Soviet Union, what happened after that, what are the power relations, what is the development economically and culturally, after this collapse 25 years ago and what's happening in these countries now and how does the future look. And that is, that is something that is of general interest and that people are sort of reminded of when they see an exhibition with artists from these countries. And I think that, so in this, in this sense, this exhibition fits into, let's say, a row, of, not a series, but a row of exhibitions that have been made in the last 10 years in Blunt's Constant. Uh, exhibitions that have been reasonably successful with the audience here. I also very much trust into the um, aim of educational aim of art. So, and uh, I find it uh, a bit arrogant to construct some curatorial uh, concept and then following the, this concept as as a, an abstraction, you know. And uh, uh, in this case, I think that um, uh, this um, ge geographical or uh, this focus on the region or the country, it's much more uh, open to audience, I think, and, and much more uh, open even to artists themselves, because uh, it, it, it let me, as a curator, uh, to uh, give them an opportunity to, to compose their own uh, ideas, not just following uh, exactly the track which I for, uh, which I show them, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why it's I always prefer to to be more <coughs> tolerant to artistic uh, wishes and to artistic desire to show something for them. And that's why uh, I think this uh, ge geographical and uh, regional country related. Um, direction is uh, not bad actually it's like maybe it's old style okay so um, I, I don't want to be in the fashion industry no but <laughs> I, I agree I, I, I also prefer to work in ways that make the artists uh, active you know to, that that doesn't take agency away from the artists because the artists here they, they have I would say a lot, uh, rather a lot of agency in this exhibition. Not not just to to in the way the works are presented and which works are presented and and and, and what we are helping them to do, you know, in, in terms of pr producing or, or installing, but also in the way that the concept of the exhibition is not rigid, and that the thoughts behind each individual work helps formulate the concept of the exhibition. The concept of the exhibition is not something that's given at the beginning, 
uh, and then the works need to be squeezed into it. No, it's something that grows together with the works that we select. Yeah. And that's, I think, quite important also. We don't want to, I think both of us, we don't want to dominate you know, uh, the discourse just by, by naming a theme. Yeah. And that's why we, we put the we put the word light motifs in the plural also in the in the exhibition title. Uh, Phantom stories is also in the plural. Light motifs of both Soviet Asia. It, it 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 opens up to different possibilities. We came up with with the exhibition in, in conversation. Uh, which artists to include and what the focus should be of the exhibition. We, we I think, quite soon agreed that we would not want to focus on, let's say, ethnic culture yeah. and tradition, but we would rather want to focus on the everyday and the legacy of modernism, of modernity and modernization. All three, in fact. Yeah. Uh, in 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 what used to be Soviet Central Asia, uh, and and for the title of the show we used the the, the, the term post Soviet Asia. Yeah, because uh, Central Asia it's rather um, how to say this uh, let's say political, and also it's include more than uh, three countries uh, from which artists are coming. So that's why I think it's it's right decision to use this term. It's also a term that, that points us, or us, first us and then the viewers, to the content of the exhibition. Because the exhibition deals much more with, with the legacy of Soviet modernity than it deals with uh, attempts to reconnect to pre-Soviet tradition, the national tradition mostly. Um, it is it is more about how artists can connect to contemporary culture through modernity in a particular region of the world than it is about national tradition, origins, revival, um, and other themes. You could easily make a, a, an equally interesting exhibition about Central Asia focusing on that. Only then you would invite other artists. Yeah. And you would invite artists also who are well known abroad or have shown in Europe or elsewhere, um, but the focus would be different. Uh, so this is what we chose to do. And, and, and of course you didn't know the building when we started, but I, I also thought it was a good idea to, to choose this focus because of the architecture of Lens Constant. Yeah, it's, it's great. And I think it's, uh, for me at least, it's uh, always more interesting to focus on these issues and uh, on these uh, thematic tracks uh, about uh, normal life and uh, how artists uh, uh, play with this or how they talk about it. Uh, because uh, uh, to make fairy tales about uh, wonderful Asia or Miracle Asia, it's of course it's very popular. People already have a lot of such kind of things and uh, but they don't know as you said already that uh, every, about everyday life and about some kind of uh, values and some kind of uh, uh, levels of, of living or about conditions of living and some problems and some mm. dreams or whatever. So in the exhibition you can see um, some of these things. You can, for instance, see how, how the inhabitants of a smaller town in Kazakhstan relate to being photographed in front of symbols of tourist attractions in the world. You, know, you have this, this work called Photos for Memory. Yeah by Yelena and Viktor Vorobyov, where, where people have been photographed in front of backdrops showing the Twin Towers in New York, the Eiffel Tower and the Kremlin. And of course the subtext there is that these people have not travelled or, or travel very rarely, but they are also interested in seeing themselves you know, as parts of a bigger world. That's, that's one of these reality things that, that are in the exhibition, but, but there are many others. Yeah. There are many others.
There are the yeah. wedding ceremonies, for instance, oh. and Alexander <laughs> Guy's video. It's uh, like kind of uh, play again with everyday life, and uh, uh, on the same time, it's uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, making making it uh, metaphoric. This everyday issues, and mm. uh, uh, for me, it's interesting how how they do it. They they do it in different way. All of them, they yes. do it in different way. Like Ulan Japarov from Kyrgyzstan, he is doing it in a rather ironic way, in a rather light way, playful, performance based. Saudati Smailova from Uzbekistan, she bases her films on a lot of archival research. She gets to the, to the old uh, footage from the early 20th century, old film footage. And she layers it with a lot of poetic readings of history, the, a dialogue that she has written and reads in, in Uzbek, which is the first time she uses her own language, basically, in her work, and, and the soundtrack, which is very important, to create a poetic reading of history, a, a, a dreamlike poetic yeah, reading of history. Yeah. Uh, and the Varabyovs are more, let's say, ironical, critical, bystanders, observers. And domestic. Yeah, and domestic as well. Whereas Alexander Ugais, I would say, is more interested in the structures of images, how images are constructed, how they come about, or how they can be deconstructed. Uh, he, he's more, he's a bit more interested in what's happening inside the camera, so to speak. Yeah, and also uh, in he connected uh, the image and making the image, just doing photography with the philosophical things and uh, with philosophy itself, yes. and it's like a good connection. And his work is also uh, probably, uh, uh, of, of the four artists, I mean the three artists and the couple in the exhibition, I think he is the one who is most, most actively and overtly concerned with modernity yes. and modernism. The others too, but for the others it's it's more about context. Yeah. It's more about the context. It's also more about a loss or a change or, or something that has some something something that has changed so much that you can almost not recognize it anymore. Whereas for Alexander, it's it's more modernity itself, also in the language of his images in his visual language. The black and white, the, the references to, to pioneers of, of photography yeah. and architecture, uh, avant-garde, not only the Russian avant-garde but also international. Not that he's working so much with quotes and references, but, but he goes into that formal and visual language much more actively yeah. than the other artists. Um, yes, it, I would say that the exhibition also uh, of course, it, 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 it is an exhibition of lens-based art, photography and, and video, um, which could be a limitation perhaps, you know, if you, if you try to fill the whole space with only that. But in this case it isn't, I think, because some of the works are also three-dimensional. They have a three-dimensional component, or the artists have been able to adapt the works in such a way that the architecture of the Kunsthalle really comes into play in the exhibition. Yes, I agree with you totally. Uh, for me, first of all, it uh, would be interesting how the audience will play with the, the architecture itself and uh, the exhibiting box because it's, it's really very connected uh, in this Kunsthalle, how the rocks fit into this place or that place, and uh, it, for me it was interesting to, to walk uh, in this direction and to, to feel the building itself and its history, its nature, and uh, try to, to have a conversation with it when, when, when we exhibit. And I think artists too. Yeah. And uh, I think it, it would be the most interesting game for audience also to try to see uh, the works of the artist in, in connection with this architecture and with this place and uh, probably with this uh, feeling of being in this building. Works uh, can be experienced in different ways depending on whether you look at them from downstairs or upstairs. And some of the installations are, are, are specifically made in order to be 
different, you know, when you look at them from the balcony, you know, when you look at them from the floor downstairs. And that's something that this Kunsthalle makes possible, which I'm always grateful for, because it, it's a very good thing. You know? yeah. The balconies are a great thing here. Not only the balcony, it's also windows and yeah, yeah. The sinks. And the contact with the city outside, because when you just come from the outside, it looks very close, the facade. But when you're inside, it's not closed at all. And that's, a, that's really a wonder that happens every time you come in here. Very, very good.